Hello and welcome to Roofing Passport. In this video, we're going to show you where and how to make changes to an existing job. As you can see, we're already logged in and we're starting out on the Active Jobs page where we have five jobs on our list. These jobs have all been created automatically by Roofing Passport using Eagle View satellite data and the default business rules and materials inventory set up in Roofing Passport for this company. It's seldom that you'll wind up bidding a job without making at least a few changes to the default specifications in order to meet the needs of each individual customer. Let's go ahead and select a job to make some changes by clicking on the edit button for that job over here on the left. And now here we are with our selected job open on the Edit Job page, as it tells us right here at the top of the page, where it says Edit Job, followed by the job name. The Edit page will allow us to make changes to any aspect of this job, from minor tweaks to broad fundamental modifications. To begin, let's take a minute to review the basic layout of the Edit Job page. It breaks down into three basic sections. The top section here is called the menu bar. As you can see, in addition to the job name, the menu bar also displays the price for this job as it's currently configured. This price will update automatically as appropriate if we make any changes to this job. Moving along to the right, these next four buttons are the mode buttons for the edit page. We're going to talk a lot more about the edit modes in a few minutes. The rest of the menu bar over here provides access to frequently used navigation and command buttons. But for now, let's take a look at the rest of the edit job page. Below the menu bar, on the left side of the window, is the display pane. As you can see, the display pane currently shows a 3D model of our roof that we can rotate to view from any angle. Now remember, we just mentioned the edit mode buttons up here on the menu bar. Depending on the edit mode that's selected, the display pane will show other information as well. Once again, we'll discuss these edit modes further in just a minute. Now, the last section of the edit job page is the properties pane over here on the right. This is where all the action takes place. Many of the changes you make to a job its design, materials, pricing, administrative information, you name it, all those changes will be made right here in the Properties pane. So now that you know the three basic sections of the Edit Job page, the Menu Bar, Display Pane, and Properties pane, let's drill down a little further into the all-important Properties pane. As you can see, the Properties pane has four different tabs at the top. Basic, Job, Advanced, and Packages. Each tab contains multiple fields and, taken collectively, these four tabs and all the fields they contain define every aspect of your job. Let's take a brief look at each of these tabs in turn. It's worth mentioning here that the installed version of Roofing Passport that you're working with has been customized to meet the needs of your organization, so the features and options you see in your display pane will vary slightly from the ones I show you here. All right, let's get started. First in line, over here on the left, is the Basic tab. It's called the Basic tab because, and this is important, all the fields on this tab apply to the entire job. As you can see at the top, we've got the calculated total square feet and the price per square feet for this entire job right here. I can change the product system or the color for the entire job right here using these drop downs. For example, let's say the customer wants to change the roof color from charcoal to red. I'll simply click on the color drop down arrow and scroll down and click on red to select it. Notice that my roof color changes automatically in the display pane to reflect the new color that I've chosen. To keep this change, 
I'll go up here to the menu bar and click on the Save button. Just below the Colors drop-down, the Labor Review section shows us the hours and labor charges Roofing Passport has calculated for this job using this company's default framing rules. Under certain conditions, you might want to change the default hours calculated for a job or change the rate you'll charge for labor. You can override these default values by double-clicking your mouse in the appropriate cell and typing in the desired value. If I change either the hours, rate, or both, the cost value over here on the right will update automatically to reflect these changes. If we decide we want to return to the default values, but can't remember exactly what they were before we made our changes, we can always click on the Reset Overrides button, like this. That returns all values to their defaults as calculated by Roofing Passport. Finally, at the bottom of the Basic tab, we've got the Markup Review section that shows the current default calculations for material, labor, and freight for the entire job. The cost field is read-only, but we can change the markup, profit, and price values as we see fit. Any change to the value made in one column here will be reflected in the other two. So for example, if I change my material markup from 0% to 15%, I now show a profit of $411.93 on materials, and the price charged to the customer has been adjusted up accordingly. Once again, we can save our changes by clicking on the Save button in the menu bar, or we can click on the Reset Overrides button to return all values in this table to their default calculations. That's about it for the Basic tab. Just remember, any changes made within this tab will apply to the entire job. Let's move along to the next tab in line. The Job tab contains the administrative information that your company uses to track and manage each job. The fields on this tab are customized to meet the needs of each organization, so the fields on your job tab will be different than the ones you see here. Other than the required job name field, companies are free to include whatever job information fields they deem appropriate. As you can see here, in addition to the job name and invoice number, this company has included the job address along with customer contact information. If the billing address had been different from the job address, that information would have been entered down here. To make changes to any of this data, click in the desired field and type in your changes. Be sure to click on the Save button in the menu bar when you're done. That leaves us with just two tabs to talk about in the Properties pane, the Advanced tab and the Packages tab. Together, these two tabs spell out all of the material specifications for this job. The Advanced tab contains specifications for all of the sheathing and trim materials, while the Packages tab lists all the additional materials that will be required for the job. Remember how we changed the color for our entire roof over here on the Basic tab? Because changes made on the Basic tab affect the entire job, right? Well, over here on the Advanced tab, the color section allows us to differentiate between the colors used for sheathing and trim. We'll just go ahead and change our trim color here from red to green and save our change when we're done. Once again, as you can see, that change is immediately reflected in the model shown in the display pane. Moving down the Advanced tab, we have sheathing specifications, including the default values for roof material, margins, start and offset. Below that are all of the specifications for roof trim and flashing, ridges, valleys, eaves, gables, it's all here. If we want to change our ridge caps from 14 inches to 20 inches, we can simply select the appropriate value from the drop-down. If we want to change the default length of all our gable flashing, we can double-click in the field and type in the desired value. 
This same editing process holds true when changing the default values listed under extra trim parts, extra sheathing parts, and trim margins. As always, be sure to click on the Save button in the menu bar to save your changes. That just leaves us with the Packages tab over here, which, as we said earlier, lists all of the materials and services required for a job other than sheathing and trim. Working with packages is a more advanced subject in Roofing Passport and well beyond the scope of an introductory video like this one. But as you can see, the Packages tab for this job includes specifications for everything from insulation and closures to freight. We'll go ahead and accept all of the default values here. Please see our additional videos for details on working with packages in Roofing Passport. Okay, I think that about covers the fundamentals on the properties pane for now, but there's still a lot more to explore and accomplish here on the Edit Job page. As you saw earlier, when we changed the color of our sheathing and trim in the properties pane, those changes were reflected immediately in the 3D model of our roof shown in the display pane. As we stated previously, however, the display pane will show other information depending on the edit mode that is currently selected in the menu bar. Remember back at the start of this video when we were talking about the menu bar? I pointed out these four edit mode buttons right here and I said we'd talk more about them later. Now is that time. The four edit buttons are labeled 3D View, Job Review, Drawings, and Advanced Edit. And as you can see, 3D View Mode is currently selected. That's because when you open a job to make changes, the Edit Job page opens in 3D View Mode by default. And so far, we've been in 3D View Mode this entire time. As you probably figured out by now, in 3D View Mode, you can make changes to your job using the tabs and fields in the Properties pane, and then see a visual representation of how those changes will affect your model in the Display pane. Now, let's click on the Job Review Mode button and see what happens. If we start over here on the right, as we toggle back and forth between 3D View and Job Review Modes, you can see that the contents of the Properties pane remain the same, regardless of which mode we've selected. This also holds true when we click on the Drawings Mode button. See? Regardless of which of these three modes we've selected, the contents of the Properties pane remain unchanged. It's the contents of the Display pane that change as we switch between these modes. That's the big takeaway here. You'll make changes to your job specifications using the Properties pane, and you will review how those changes affect different aspects of the job by evaluating the information presented in the Display pane. So let's take a closer look at the contents of the Display pane provided in each mode. In Job Review mode, the display pane shows six different tabs of information about the material, labor, and freight requirements for the job. Where the menu bar displays the current price for the entire job at the top of the page, the Summary tab in Job Review Mode shows the breakdown of that price by material and service type along with any applicable taxes. These other tabs, Sheathing, trim, accessories, labor, and freight show a breakdown of the job material and service requirements listed by category on the Summary tab. Take a look here at our Sheathing tab. Note that the sheathing color indicated for the current job is red. If we go back to the Basic tab and change the color of our roof to Hawaiian blue and then save our change, when we go back to Job Review Mode and look at the Sheathing tab, the color indicated on the Materials list has changed to Hawaiian Blue. In 3D View Mode, we see the color change reflected on our model. Now let's go ahead and click on the Drawings Mode button and see what that looks like. 
As you can see, we've got a layout drawing of our entire roof showing in the display pane. And over here on the left, we've got a menu of drawings to choose from, including our four elevation drawings for left, front, right, and back, as well as a series of sheathing drawings that show each individual roof plane along with the materials list for each. That just leaves Advanced Edit Mode, which is the only mode that permits users to make changes to individual roof planes. That's important, so let me say it again. Advanced Edit Mode is the only place in Roofing Passport where you can make changes to individual roof planes. As you can see, when we click on the Advanced Edit Mode button, it looks a whole lot like the information presented in Drawing Mode. Like Drawing Mode, the display pane is showing the layout of our entire roof, and we've got a similar menu over here on the left, except that it's lacking the elevation drawings available in Drawing Mode. Notice as well over here on the right that the area occupied by the Properties pane is currently blank. That is, until we select one of our roof panels from the menu on the left. As soon as we do that, the Properties pane is populated once again. This time, however, the Properties pane only has one tab rather than four. It's the Advanced tab. We'll use the fields in this tab to make any changes we want to the selected roof panel. I'll change the hip and ridge cap trim for this panel from 14 inches to 20 inches and then we'll go ahead and save our changes. Well that's about it for our overview of editing a job in Roofing Passport. Remember there are three basic sections to the edit job page including menu bar, display pane, and properties pane. Changes to your job are made in the fields contained in the properties pane and then you can review those changes and the effect they have on your model, materials list, and drawings in the display pane, depending on which edit mode you have selected in the menu bar. Speaking of the menu bar, there are a few more features and functions I should mention here before signing off. These are available on the menu bar regardless of the edit mode that's currently selected. We're going to skip over the Create Option button here and save that for another video. Moving right, if you click on the Print button, you can download a printable version of the current contents of the display pane. You can return to your jobs list at any time by clicking on the Job List button here. If you've made any changes that haven't been saved, you'll be prompted to save those changes before leaving the Edit Job page. You can click on the Outputs button to download a variety of outputs for the selected job, including layout and sheathing drawings, material lists, job quotes, and much more. You can also change a job status from New to Quoted by clicking on the Make Quote button here. This will lock down the job specifications once you're done making changes. We've already pointed out the Save button here. The Edit Geometry button is used to change the type or length of any roof line and to correct any errors in the existing roof geometry data. We're going to save the Edit Geometry function for a help video of its own. The last button we'll talk about in the menu bar is this little yellow Show Help icon. Be sure to click on it for context-sensitive help about the Edit Job page and all of its modes. That's it for our overview of the Edit Job page. Be sure to watch our other instructional videos and review the online help documents to learn how to harness the power and flexibility of Roofing Passport.